you were recruited in the Sea Org. Yes, I was in 1995. And so what's that like? Like, I imagine that's everyone's dream, right? <laughs> the Sea Org? <laughs> no, to become a member of it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it, well, no, it's not everybody's dream. It's more like... The C, I, this is an analogy or it's, it's a simile. It's not a straight comparison. But if you look at being clergy in the Catholic Church, you might have your local bishop or deacon, right? Or whatever the terminology is for the local guys, the guys who are operating at the city level, let's say. That's where their, their sphere of responsibility is. That's the staff members. The guys at the Vatican, that's the Sea Org. They are the hardcore, committed, core element of the religion. Without them, the rest of it falls apart. That's the Sea Org. It's about four to 5,000 people worldwide. And they deliver all of the advanced materials. They manage Scientology internationally. We were, as a staff member in Santa Barbara, we were receiving weekly orders and phone calls from Sea Org management telling us what to do in Santa Barbara to become a bigger, prosperous uh, organization uh, following L. Ron Hubbard's policies, because L. Ron Hubbard wrote policy letters guiding the organizations on how to make how to deliver classes, how to deliver auditing, how to do sales, how to do dissemination or marketing and promotion, how to how how the building should be laid out, um, that what offices should exist in the building, that there should be an office for L. Ron Hubbard. All of these are policies that L. Ron Hubbard wrote. How to do weekly invoicing, how to um, get somebody started on a course, how to get somebody... Uh, attested to an auditing service so that they've completed it and you get them re-signed onto their next service. The re-sign line was a big deal in Scientology. It's not just a matter of signing the person up, but then when they finish the service, getting them re-signed onto their next service. This was really crucial, right? You don't just let them walk out the door. You're going to lose 90% of them if you do that. So like all of this stuff is codified in policies The Sea Org tells the orgs what to do following L. Ron Hubbard's policies. They say, hey, take this policy letter, do this. You know, take this policy letter, do this, right? Apply this, do this, do that. They're always trying to tell people what to do, right, based on their production statistics. And we had to report our statistics every week. And that's a big deal in Scientology. How many, for me, as a course room supervisor, the statistics that I lived or died by mainly was course completions. How many people completed a course this week? And we would work our asses off to get people through their classes, even calling them in to do more extra time on their class. Let's say the guy was scheduled to only come in like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. But I needed that guy to get done this week. So I would call him and I'd convince him, you got to come in Saturday. You got to come in Sunday because you got... 16 hours of coursework left, but you're only scheduled for six. So I need you to come in more so you can finish this week instead of next week, because I want you on this week's statistic. And this was how we would run every week. We were trying to get the lines to go up on our graphs, right, of our statistics. How many completions? How many, how much money made? How many um, people, how many hours of counseling services were delivered this week? How many new people walked in the door? How many new people took a personality test? How many new people signed up for services that week? There are tens, probably about every week, I think we had to report about 120 different production statistics to management. And we would graph these every week. And if the line went up, then we were expanding. We were doing better. And if it went down, that means we produced less than we did last week. And that was bad. And we, you know, needed to hustle and get industrious and produce more this week. And this is why I would be calling people and saying, hey, man, I need you to come in this weekend. I know it's not scheduled, but this is Scientology and this is completions and we're going to make your life better. So you got to get more time in on this course, right? 
I was motivated more by trying to get the statistic up than I was by trying to help this person because the pressure to have the statistics going up every week was intense. And mind you, we weren't getting paid shit for this. We were just doing it because we thought we were saving the world. Yeah, Amy, Amy, my listeners, hi, Amy. Amy says it's like being a Mormon missionary, basically, but basically statistics-driven to help yes. advance the organization under the purview of being a volunteer. But really what you are is you're a money-making source. You're a, mar- you're a marketing and you're administrating recruitment and development of, of paying members. That's uh, exactly that's exactly right. That's exactly so right. it really is a business. Yeah. It's just the business shrouded in a nonprofit. Or exactly. A, it was all about it was all about the Benjamins at the end of the day. It's a business shrouded in religion, but but ultimately driven by numbers and driven by revenue. Exactly. Yeah. And income was the most important statistic of all. Of course. You know, other things could be going to hell, but if the income was doing okay, then cool, right? right. And we were in a building that had a mortgage. And we had balloon payments and we had problems making that mortgage payment. And sometimes it would go defaulting for three or four months at a time and we would struggle. And so there were late nights where we were up until, you know, whatever ungodly hours trying to sell books and sell services and convince somebody to pay us money. And we were always trying to do it in such a way that we weren't making a bad name for the church. Like, oh my God, we're about to lose the building. We're struggling so bad. We need your money. Like we couldn't say stuff like that, or we weren't supposed to. Eventually we had to, because it was the only way to get money out of people sometimes is plug on your on their heartstrings if for no other reason. But but we were ostensibly trying to sell them more services or more counseling, more hours of auditing. So those were the ways we were supposed to be making the money and to make the mortgage, just to keep the doors open. We were struggling every month just to keep the doors open. So this was, this was a difficult eight years for us, right? And I, after eight years of it, I was like, God damn, man, I really know further along right now than when I first got here. 